defeating Satan. We should be alert to Satan's continual evil efforts to destroy local churches and other Christian ministries. Here's Gene. Satan is alive and well, and that's one of his goals. Because behind every untruth and divisive situation, or this kind of false accusation, Satan is behind it somewhere in terms of influence. And so Paul now addresses that very clearly. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 1 to 4, he says, I wish you could put up with a little foolishness from me. Now, this is fascinating, and uh, as we unfold here for a moment, you're going to see why Paul uses the word foolishness. Yes, do put up with me, for I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy, writing to these Corinthians, because I have promised you in marriage to one husband. He uses the metaphor there of the, the bride of Christ. And he said, I want to present you, using the metaphor, as a pure virgin to Christ, which, by the way, projects us all the way to uh, the book of Revelation, where uh, the bride of Christ, once we are raptured and, and we go uh, before the Lord, uh, we are presented to the Savior uh, as the perfect bride of Jesus. And so Paul is alluding to that great truth. But he says, I fear. I fear that as the serpent deceived Eve, and there he goes right to the satanic influence, by his cunning your minds may be corrupted from a complete and pure devotion to Christ. Who is at the root of this? Satan, just as he deceived Eve. For if a person comes and preaches another Jesus, now he's really getting specific here, because these false apostles were not presenting the Jesus of the New Testament and the Old Testament. They were presenting another Jesus, calling Him the Messiah, but not the God-man as Paul had presented Jesus, whom we did not preach. Not this other Jesus. We preach the true Jesus. Or you receive a different spirit. Obviously, now we're getting into another issue which he alluded to earlier. And that is that there was some type of demonic evil going on here. This other spirit is other than the Holy Spirit. This is, this is a serious situation that Paul is addressing. Which you had not received. That is, you received the Holy Spirit and now... You're hearing from these false apostles, and I believe probably they were going into these pagan temples and engaging in these pagan meals and in these pagan situations, which Paul had addressed earlier and said, don't be a part of that, don't have fellowship with them. In other words, they were really leading them astray. Or a different gospel, a different message of salvation, which definitely was happening. And Paul deals with this, as we'll see in Galatians which you had not accepted, if you received that different gospel, different spirit, another Jesus. That's wrong. But here he gets a little subtle. He said, you've put up with it splendidly. In other words, you know, you've just walked into it. You've just accepted it. And you know better. You've been deceived. You've been led astray. And so Paul is really concerned in addressing this issue here. Now, he goes on to say, But I will continue to do what I am doing in order to cut off the opportunity of those who want an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in what they are boasting about. For such people are, and here he says it directly, they are false apostles. This sounds like what he said in his letter to Titus. They are false apostles. They are deceitful workers. They are disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder. And here he gets... Very specific in terms of uh, the source of all of this. For Satan himself is disguised as an angel of light. That's the way he works. Jesus called him the father of liars. And so it is no great thing if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Just as Satan dis disguised himself as an angel of light, 
So these men are disguising themselves as angels of light. They're saying they are servants of righteousness. They are not servants of righteousness. They're servants of evil. And their destiny will be according to their works. And you know, Satan's strategy hasn't changed. Today, if you go look at what Satan does, and if you go back in this letter, Paul has referred to Satan three times. And we'll look at that in a moment. Number one, Satan's strategy today, he attempts to destroy unity in the body of Christ by generating bitterness and unforgiveness. He was working that line there in Corinth. 2 Corinthians 2.10, if you go all the way back to chapter 2. Now to whom you forgive anything I do too for what I have forgiven. If I have forgiven anything, it is for you in the presence of Christ. Here he's dealing with forgiving this individual who had sinned and repented. And he says, forgive so that we may not be taken advantage of by Satan. For we are not ignorant of his intentions. One of the things that Satan will use in our lives is lack of forgiveness. And boy, where there's lack of forgiveness, he will get to us. That's part of his intentions. Number two, Satan seeks to blind the minds of unbelievers so they will not respond to the gospel. In uh, chapter 4, he referred to Satan. He called him the God of this age. Regarding them, the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Who is at the root of causing people not to be able to see the truth? Satan himself. And here Paul calls him the God of this age. See, this is not the first time in the letter that Paul has referred to Satan. And so when we come to this next point, which relates to what we've just looked at, he seeks to corrupt the minds of true believers so they are not fully devoted to Jesus Christ. Not only is Satan at work blinding unbelievers, but he's at work trying to corrupt our minds and to keep us from being fully devoted to Jesus. And that's what Paul addressed here in chapter 11. But I fear that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your minds may be corrupted from a complete and pure devotion to Christ. Question. How can we defeat Satan and keep him from being successful in carrying out his evil intentions? We can defeat him. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6 is a fabulous passage. We won't take time to look at that. But look at James 4, 7. Therefore, submit to God. If we submit to him... But resist the devil and he will flee from you. We do not have to cave in to Satan. Submit to God, resist Satan. And then Peter says, be sober. Be alert. He's like an angel of light. Be alert. Your adversary the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour. There he uses another metaphor. Resist him. James said the same thing. Firm in the faith. Very important. Stay strong in the Lord. Knowing that the same sufferings are being experienced by your brothers in the world. In other words, you're not alone and you can defeat, defeat Satan. So, uh, the scriptures give us hope. Uh, and Satan does not have to be victorious in our lives. He that is in us is greater than he that is in this world. Right? That's a wonderful truth. 